What's up everybody, uh, Lewis back here with another tutorial. Just wanted to give a shout out. Uh, never thought it would actually hit 80 subscribers. But to everybody that, that has subscribed and everybody that's um, you know liking the tutorials and people encouraging me and leaving comments, uh, that's all great and that's actually what's keeping me going right now. So, uh, last time we went over uh, some things in the nav menu and I think a few tutorials before that I was showing how we're gonna pretty much be injecting uh, bootstrap into the pages to make them responsive so I think a, a good page to start with would be a login page for Magento and it's a standard uh, template page and let's first things first here is I always like to grab the uh, template path hints just to know what we'll uh, be dealing with and if you don't know about uh, this extension this is in uh, the first tutorial that I have but it seems like what we're going to be doing is going to this path right here so let me go ahead and open up Eclipse and okay so it would be an app design front end uh, default custom theme template persistent yep I already got that open persistent customer form login okay so now that we have that open and we know where that is let me go ahead and get rid of these template path hints. And I immediately noticed that there is a sort of restriction on the width here. And let's go and check that out in Firebug. And I'm guessing it has something to do with call main. This is uh, another standard class that Magento puts out and I can almost guarantee that there is a width and this is probably a max width, but uh, I think we can just get rid of it all together. Let's just uh, see what happens if I cancel it out. Okay, so then the page looks uh, as if it's going full width. So I'm going to go to open styles and, and just cancel out that max width there. Now if you remember the uh, styles has always been under here let's see skin front end default custom theme CSS styles.css and in this case it happens to be um, line 104 so I'm just gonna go to line 104 And this might, you know, break some things in, in the future. Uh, but I'm kind of known for doing that. But we'll get rid of that for now. And maybe we'll need to adjust something later. But no worries, I'm just commenting it out. So if I refresh, this should take up uh, the full width. Okay, great. Now I'm going to head back into this login page. And it doesn't seem like Magento does such a great job as far as laying things out. Um, it has this call to set. Now here's where it's going to echo out login and create an account, which is right here. And that, that's just fine. And even having the form element here is just fine. What happens here is Magento is using this call to set. And if I go over here, you'll see what it kind of does hmm. or maybe not maybe it doesn't actually do anything just yet so that's pretty useless so we'll be getting rid of that and then within that call to set it has uh, call one new users 
So if I click on that, this should probably have something that says like, oh, you know, use up 50, yeah, there you go. Float left, make a width of blah, blah, blah. So we'll be just doing away with that shit. Um, so let's get started. Um, right below in this form, I'm just going to have a, uh, oops, div class equals row fluid. Okay, and I'll take that closing div, and I'm going to throw that after I think after here. Yeah, that works. Okay, so create a new row. By the way, the way Magento is handling this is you see this class call to set where it has like call one and then call two. Magento on this page is having this right here and this right here in the same sort of weird row and then these are separate these bottom parts and I'll show you what I mean so let me go back here and this call to set I think we should just completely get rid of so let's see where it ends Okay, so now instead of call one, new users, uh, I'm just going to make that uh, call sm6 so that it takes up half. And then over here, uh, I'm going to make this a call sm6, that way it takes up the other half. And I don't think that we will experience too much trouble with this, but just to show you how um, this part and this part are separated, I'm going to go ahead and refresh. So let's see, we have uh, these two things acting normally and these two acting like children. Uh, so Bootstrap is affecting these, and I can go in to firebug and the way I do it is I always just minimize things we have our row fluid then we have these two that equal out to 12 and then the row closes so let's actually just for experiment see what happens if I were to yeah so if I were to collapse these they uh, they do collapse properly now we're just gonna take these elements and add them in to their parent elements instead of being so separate. So we have this div, and I'll just space it out. So this is taking up half, and then we have this whole shit taking up another half, and then we have our row ending. Now you see this, this right here uh, corresponds to this right here. So, uh, we have this call one new users. Uh, we're probably just going to get rid of that. So, the only part I'm taking out of the useful part, uh, div class equals button set. I'm going to cut, then go up to our first call six here, paste right in. And then we can get rid of that. And then this part right here corresponds to this whole forgot your password, blah, blah, blah. So I will take this, cut, and I'll append it to the end of this uh, column six. Oops, wait, did I take out too much? Um, uh, 
Okay, yeah, so this is the registered users. So I don't think I need this class registered user. I just want the uh, the button set. So I'm just going to uh, cut there, edit here. And then this, you know, little block that they tried to do, the call to set, we can just get rid of that. Because that was pretty much taking over. That was pretty much this right here. I'm going to go ahead and save. And we'll see if I screwed everything up or if things are working fine. Okay, so now they actually match up. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just go ahead and resize to make sure that they match up still down here and indeed they do and if you want to have a separation here as the things collapse you could uh, add another class and that other class would uh, just give a margin uh, a bottom margin to this right here so let me know uh, what you think of this. This is simply just injecting Bootstrap into uh, the template files and working quite well, and Bootstrap lets us do it that way. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I, uh, I tend to freestyle my tutorials. I don't actually write a script or anything like that. Um, but if you were to like it that way, then that's cool. I just like to be friendly, give shout outs to all the subscribers here, and uh, you know, sort of thank everybody and, and just go off the top of my head. So uh, I think that's it for now, and uh, hopefully I'll come out with something soon. So uh, thank you all for, uh, you know, influencing me to uh, keep this going. Take care.